On our journey today, we are going to check out the interior of the entryway to the Dakota apartment building. So slide on your backpack and grab your passport and come along with me as we travel back in time. This video is sponsored by Audible Adventures. Kindly sign up for an annual subscription today. It is a great way to support my research and my productions. Welcome along fellow time travelers, this is Scott Cardinal. Thank you for joining me for another photo analysis video. Today we are traveling back in time to New York City in 1980. This episode is going to be broken up into part 1 and part 2. Part 1 is going to showcase the architecture and the design and a little bit of history about what we'll see in this photo. And part 2 is going to showcase what may or may not have happened in the evening of December 8th, 1980. So let's start our photo analysis. This photo was chosen because there are no people in it, and also because it pretty much shows what it looked like in 1980 when John Lennon lived at the Dakota. Also, it's because it shows this temporary winter shelter. It's really a vestibule that was placed there in order to protect residents from the cold wind while entering and exiting the security office. If you look at photos of the Dakota at any other time of the year, you're not going to see that structure there. Now this photo was taken from the sidewalk, just outside of the well-guarded gates at the entryway to the building. For the sake of simplicity, I am going to refer to it as an entryway, but it could also be referred to as a carriage porch or, and this is a fancy term, a porte cochere. It's estimated to be 15 feet in width and 40 feet in length. Countless people have stood in this particular spot, quite possibly even you, and daydreamed about walking past those gates and entering the building. I was certainly one of those people when I was a kid. And when the day finally came when I was invited inside the Dakota for the first time by a Dakota resident, I could honestly say that I never walked so slow in my entire life. And it's not because of what happened to John Lennon there, because I don't think like that. I just felt like I was walking into a daydream. You see, the entryway is much larger than it appears to be in this photo. And one can't help but feel a sense of complete and total amazement when walking there. At least that's what it was like for me. You see, I always imagine hearing the sounds of horse-drawn carriages passing through after coming in from the street. And I always imagine well-dressed men and elegant ladies passing through as if it was the 1880s. So when I'm there, and when I look at photos like this, that's just how I think. And it's how I've always thought. I was like that when I was a kid, I was like that when I was a teenager, and it's how I am today. I always see things in a kind of time travel style, and I imagine how things were when places were built. But not everybody's like that, so let's focus on this photo and the Dakota's entryway as it appears in this photo taken in 1980. Looking down, you can see that there is enough room in the center for a car to pull in, but it's not the most convenient experience on earth, so it's not something that happens often. On the sides can be seen pedestrian sidewalks. They're estimated to be three and a half feet in width. There are large sandstone blocks along the base of the building, on the far right, looks like that's an old-fashioned mailbox. And looking up, you can see stately lanterns along the walls made of buff yellow bricks. Now take a look up. You can see along the entire length of the entryway, there's a very elegant groined ceiling. It was designed by Rafael Guastavino. He was a Spanish building engineer and builder who emigrated to the United States in 1881. In fact, on March 7, 1885, there was an article entitled the Dakota Apartment House. It was printed in the Real Estate Record and Builder's Guide. And Guastavino was identified as the contractor in charge of fireproof construction, in reference, of course, to the Dakota Apartment Building. Though even though the work he did was not specified in this article, the work most likely included the groin vault entries on the south side, that's West 72nd Street, and on the north side, which is West 73rd Street as well as the construction of the subterranean basement and the three-foot-thick arched floors between the basement and the attic levels. After all, that was his area of expertise. Now, take a look over there on the left. You can see that there is a door. It was originally designed to be an office for the porter, and there's a service elevator on the other side for the apartments on the southwest side of the building. Now, across from that, on the other side of the winter shelter, the vestibule, are steps that ascend to a door that leads into the office. 
and it's inside there where visitors check in. The office is in the perfect location because it commands a view at all times of the entryway and the courtyard. And you can see there's a very pretty bay window here. And there's another one right there on the west side. Now looking past the inner gate into the courtyard, looking along the west side, you can see an enclosure. And it could be seen in the opening of the film Rosemary's Baby. And in the center of the courtyard can be seen one of the large cast iron water fountains. And behind that, you can see the branches growing up from the tree in the center planter. And you could also see windows to the basement and the first floor and the second floor of apartments there on the north side of the building facing West 73rd Street. And you can see windows to the service staircase on the north side of the building. And you can also see one of the skywalks that connects an apartment to the service staircase and elevator. And you can even see all the way through to West 73rd Street. Now focusing on the foreground, since the Dakota was built between 1880 and 1884, this area is about 8 feet wide, and it was designed for horse-drawn carriages to be able to enter and exit. And the carriages would stop here for guests to disembark when visiting, or to meet residents for dinner, since this was once the entryway to the Dakota's private restaurant. Now, if you want to be like me for a moment, just imagine what an incredible experience it must have been to be there. Just imagine the carriage stopping and a porter coming to the door and you're stepping down and touching the ground in the 1880s and knowing that you've arrived at the Dakota. See, I think stuff like that's pretty cool. And it's a lot more fun and interesting and fascinating and educational, in my opinion, to envision that than obsessing over you know, one particular horrific event that happened there in 1980. And I think more people should prefer those kinds of images in their mind. I think people deserve that. I think the Dakota deserves that. Anyway, I think the entryway to the Dakota apartment building is a place of major architectural significance. It's really beautiful. And it's a shame that it's kind of been lost in the shadow of what happened there many decades ago. And so this concludes part one of this photo analysis of the interior of the entryway to the Dakota apartment building. I hope it gives you a good understanding of how interesting and beautiful the Dakota apartment building is and that there's a lot more to it than what happened to John Lennon there. If you have any thoughts about the subject matter, please put those in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also go on Amazon or any other bookseller and order some of the books that I've written about the Dakota. Please do me a favor and download the Audible Adventures app to your iPhone or Android. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. So until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.